In this video, I want to show you the latest state of my Godot game. It's an ARPG, that's an action role-playing game. So stay along till the end of the video to see a demo. I also want to show you the highlights of the development since the last devlog. For me, those highlights include some iPhone development. I've been playing around in Xcode trying to get the game ported to iPhone. And I will show you and tell you about how that was. I've also added some audio effects to the game. So for example, some music and some hit and death audio effects. Third highlight and last highlight I want to talk more about is my journey of working with inheritance versus composition for the game in an attempt to add attributes to the entities like stamina, strength, and agility. So stay along for the ride and the video to learn more. So first up is the app development for iPhone where it wasn't really obvious out of the box what to do. So I read online that Godot has support for um, Godot iPhone support. Godot has support for iPhone. But it wasn't perfect. So what I found is that just doing it out of the box, you will get some errors. So there are some tricks you have to do, like exclude, at least on this Apple Silicon. This is an Apple Silicon laptop I'm on. So you have to exclude ARM64 architecture. And then you have to pick this like standard architectures option and then use the iPhone 15 Pro. And then at least it will start building. However, I got into an error initially in this project where I had like it was complaining about some particle system not being able to to run correctly. So what I had to do then was to go into project settings, general. And let's see here. I think it was like render or something. Rendering renderer. Yes, here. So if I had rendering method mobile, like um, mobile or forward plus, it wouldn't work. So what I had to do is pick GL compatibility here, and then, then it compiled. However, what I see now is that it's like extremely buggy. So if I run this, it's waiting to reconnect. Yeah, I think now this is a virtual iPhone that it's running on. So let's load this up and you will see that it's, one, it's extremely slow. And two, it's a bit, um, it doesn't look the same as the game does when I run it in my computer, like from, from, the, from the Mac itself. So now when this is loading up, and actually, I don't know if this was before or after I added sounds, but I'm gonna show you. So now I'm clicking here on like start game. I'm clicking now, nothing is really happening. And then this is gonna take a few seconds before it loads at all. And so it's not a perfect experience. So something, now it's here. And let's see, like now I'm clicking over here. And what does it do? You see, it's like one frame every three seconds or something. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, it's less than one FPS, so it's not great. And I'm, I'm guessing this is because this is being, it's using some virtual iPhone and it's slow or something. There's also some errors in the, in the output. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I have to debug this further, but anyway, so that's my experience 
so far developing for the iPhone. Something I want to try is to become an Apple developer member. That's like a membership you have to pay for. And as far as I understand, don't quote me on it, but then you will have access to simulate or like try out this kind of thing, but like directly on your physical iPhone. And that should circumvent the issue I'm seeing here. I'm, I'm anticipating. So in addition to the iPhone development, I also did some experimentation with sounds. So one thing I wanted to do was add a some sound effects. So like the player, there would be some, when the player hits the enemy, there would be some, some kind of a sound. So I can show you, and here's another sound that I added. And here's another one. What I want to show you though is this sound. Boom. Boom. I'll show you what happens when the player dies. When the enemy dies. So those are the sounds I created, and I created all of them myself. I mean, you can kind of hear that they're not professional. Uh, but it still makes the game less empty, I think. So the like bam bada bam bam thing I recorded here in Audacity um, or Audacity or however it's pronounced. So for example here like the death sound. I'm not hearing it. Strange. Well anyway. So I was just recording it like this. I was like and I thought it was pretty funny to do. Um, and the same when you're hitting the, the enemy. I was like, I had a pillow and I was just like hitting it like this. Until I got a sound that I thought was like, okay, this is a reasonable sound. Let's go with that. Like a placeholder sound. Um, so that was those sounds. And then for, for the music... Um, I actually used GarageBand to record it. So, I mean, it's not great, but it was still an experience. I just, honestly, what I did, and maybe like if you're a musician or you're, you're artistic. Oh, this is, I think I messed up here. I didn't save my version. And then I, I wanted to do some boss fight music that is like more intense, but it just became a horrendous soundscape instead. Uh, but what I did was like, I, I looked up in ChatGPT, I was like, hey ChatGPT, can you give me a chord progression that fits this kind of a game? Um, and it gave me something, I, I wrote those chords out, I had to like Google, like... Uh, Piano E chord and see like okay what's the E chord? I'll check the the um, the keys to press the E chord as an example. I went into GarageBand and then I uh, here. And then I press them like, uh, here's a chord, for example, these three. Um, yeah. So that's how I did the music. I recorded that, created a WAV file, and then like getting it into Godot was pretty simple. So let's see here. So on the boss, for example, or let's take something that you've seen, like the rogue, the enemy player. It just has two sounds in it, an attacked sound, which is this. And then the dead sound, which is this. Yeah. 
so that's uh, that's about sounds i it was very fun and i i can see there's so much you can do with it like i want the, the game to feel great i love games that creates a feeling within me and i think great sounds and great music is definitely a way to do that so i want to explore this more i would i would consider the sounds that i've added so far placeholders more than anything else but it still got me gave me some experience working with sounds in godot yeah cool so let's move on to inheritance and uh, and composition so inheritance and composition it's um, like i wanted to i wanted to expand let's say the player and the the enemies and the boss and so on with certain attributes so how I initially started doing that was if we go into scripts here and have a look, you will see that the player inherits from something called a character. And the character is also inherited by the enemy up here. Um, that was all great until I wanted to, to start adding some more. Okay. Let's, let's take a step back here. Honestly, I'm not really sure yet. What is the ideal structure here? I'm still learning like where is inheritance good and where is composition good? As far as I understand. Inheritance can be useful in some some cases, and composition is good in some. But in general, my understanding is that composition is usually preferred because it's easier to work with, and it's easier to handle changing requirements, which I notice, like, even if I'm the one creating this game, I'm the one coming up with the requirements, they still change a lot. Like initially I just, okay, let's create one character and one enemy and let them hard code target each other. And then it's like, okay, now I want them to like dynamically find each other because I want two enemies. So I can't hard code it anymore. And then at some point I might want to auto-generate enemies and like the positions they spawn at with some like random component and perhaps I want to give them random attributes S there might be some let's say components in the world that are like let's say a trap a trap might have damage but it doesn't have health or maybe it does have health but it can't move and i think when when those kind of things get into the game it will start becoming a bit problematic to be over reliant on inheritance so that's why i started thinking a bit about how i how i structure the code and how i structure the objects in the code in such a way that it will be easy to add on whatever I want in the future or easier at least uh, but this is still a journey I'm I'm on and like I'm trying to figure out what's a good way to structure it and also to find a balance between creating stuff fast and seeing results on the one hand and on the other hand, having code that is maintainable, where it's easy to not just add something right now because I want it right now, but like 
one week or four weeks down the line, it should still be easy to add things and change things. So I'm striking a balance here, but I'm finding it super interesting to, to learn these things. Like there's just this chaos that is created after a while in the project, at least for me, if I let it just organically, organically grow. So I'm trying to a little now and then prune the code, prune the, the structure of things to keep it under control. Yeah. And also like I'm getting, I'm noticing that I'm getting a strong sense of pleasure from having a good structure in the code. Like, uh, when I manage to move something from, let's say this GUI, this graphical user, user interface, if I can move something from here, like that is manually added into the code, um, like the timer here that I have, for example. First, I this timer was created like as a, a node that I created in the GUI. Now I created in the code on the character, and this is the swing timer that every character has. At some point, I might actually want to use it as a component instead. But I think you get the idea. Like, it's very enjoyable, I think, the coding aspect of creating the game. And I also believe that it's not, it's not just for me as the programmer of the game that it's enjoyable. I believe that coding it in a good way will make me faster at adding new things. It will enable me to do things that makes the game better. For example, what I, what I talked about earlier about randomly generating content, like procedurally generating a world without the right structure of the code, that might be a very difficult project, but I, I do think that with the right structure, it can become easier and in the end, make a better game. Cool. So that's some rambling about the inheritance versus composition debate that I'm having with myself and some of the viewers right now. And I think this is something I will get come back to in future devlogs as well. All right, so let's uh, let's jump into the final section of the devlog. I'm gonna show you a demo of the game. So you've already seen parts of the game when I showed bam, you the bam, sounds, bam, but now let me show bam, you the bam, full bam, game. Bam, 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 bam. So here we have the start screen. You hear the sounds in the background. Super simple here. Press start game and it starts the game. Some music is playing. We can move around the character like this. It has wave, like smart wayfinding. Now the enemy starts chasing us, but we can run away from it. We run far enough, it's gonna stop chasing us. And you see here it's picking a smart way around here. It can like navigate around. And down to the left you see the health, so it's like 20, 18. We can pull them both and hit them both at the same time. get to the boss fight. And the boss fight doesn't really have any mechanics added yet, but I do aim to um, to give it some interesting mechanics. Oh no. So this is what happens when we die. We get like a game over screen and we can go back to start or try again. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like if I would kill the boss, I can show you quickly. There's not much difference.
Something I want to add as well. Is some more interesting particles to the game. But that will come in the future. Cool. So that's the demo. I'm going to turn off that sound now because that's making me crazy. No, what I actually wanted to say is like something I want to add to the game is um, easier testing because I'm noticing that every time I, I go into um, like there's something I want to test, it can take a few seconds to a minute to actually test it. And coming from somewhat of a software engineering or like tech, very vague, I know, but like background, I I think like unit testing is so strong because you can like in seconds know if things still work as you think they do. And I, I, I really want to implement that here so that I quickly can check that things work. I don't have to like play test everything over and over again every time I change something. And that's like a topic for the future. Anyway, so thank you so much for checking this video out. It was really good to to have you here, to to have you join the, the journey I'm on, on creating my first game, hopefully first of many. If you like the video, please um, support me and and this project by giving the video a like and also subscribing if you want to see more videos in the future. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.